The Pentax 645N is a camera that I've owned and used for quite a while, and it's my favorite medium format film camera. So I'm Hashem, thanks for joining. Welcome back to another Pushing Film video. Today I'm gonna to be comparing the Pentax 645N to another camera, because recently a company called Reshoot Australia reached out to me and asked me if there was anything I wanted to borrow to have a play with, and I thought it would be great to compare my beloved Pentax 645N, which I've owned for six years, to another 645 system, which today is the Mamiya 645 Pro. And this is a very similar camera to the 645N in that it's an electronic 645 camera with auto advance. The key difference, however, is that the Mamiya 645 is a system camera. It's a modular camera, meaning it has interchangeable backs. You can change the prism and the grip and so on. But today's video is not gonna really be a review of these two cameras because I feel like there's plenty of those out there. It's more of a comparison of which one to go for in case you're in the market for one of these cameras. They're both quite popular, similar in price. Therefore, I thought I would make a video comparing some of the key differences. So it's gonna be a little bit longer. I've tried to put chapter markers in the description so that you can skip ahead if you like, but I would encourage you to stick around and kind of learn some of those key differences in case you're not very familiar and you wanna know what the differences are and how they relate to your usage. So if you are after a more in-depth review, I definitely encourage you to look up uh, others. I haven't done one on my camera because there's plenty out there. You can look at the reviews done by a lot of the other uh, YouTubers out there. Some of my fellow uh, facial hair growing, hat wearing, film shooting hipsters have done plenty of reviews on these cameras, including uh, the Pentax 645N by Matt Day, Carl McDougall's done a review, both excellent reviews, and Nick Carver has covered the Mamiya. So feel free to check them out. And there's, I'm sure plenty of other great reviews on YouTube if you wanna dive deeper and check that out. I'm also going to throw a wild card into the mix with the Bronica ETRS. Because it's a bit different than these two cameras, I thought it wouldn't be fair to compare it directly. These are electronic 645 cameras. The Bronica is mechanical. It's a manual advanced camera. And I thought it wouldn't be quite fair, but I will talk about it a little bit in the end as an alternative and talk about how it differs and why it might be an, a viable alternative. And I normally use this Pentax 645N at a lot of weddings for the portrait session. And I had a wedding where I was gonna be shooting mainly film. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to take both these cameras. I used them side by side and it gave me a really good idea of how they compare. So having looked back on that and used it a little bit more for just a recreational role or two, I was able to look at what I thought was great about the Mamiya and give it scores compared to the Pentax 645N in various aspects such as ergonomics, viewfinder, meter, price, and so on. I've tried to be uh, unbiased as much as I can, which is why I've done this scored section. So just to start that off, first thing we want to look at is the ease of use elements such as the viewfinder. First thing I noticed was that the Pentax has a brighter viewfinder. The Mamiya isn't bad. And it also has the advantage of a split prism and micro, a split image and micro prism in the focusing screen, which is a little bit more of a matte looking focusing screen. But in general, the Pentax 645N had a brighter focusing screen, but it lacks the micro prism or split image. Those are optional focusing screens that don't come with it by default, which is a little bit annoying if you only ever use manual focus lenses. So overall, they both scored the same in terms of overall viewfinder score. The next thing I looked at was the ergonomics of the camera, how comfortable it is to use and the interface of the buttons and dials and so on. I did find that the Pentax was more comfortable to hold and use. Part of that is because of the weight balance. The Pentax just feels more comfortable in terms of its grip, size, and weight distribution. Also, it feels a lot easier to use in terms of the placement of the dials and things such as the buttons that control ISO, the bracketing, changing the ISO, changing the metering modes, uh, the switches on the back and even having that little screen are little advantages that the Pentax had over the Mamiya in terms of ergonomics. Not to say that the Mamiya 645's ergonomics are bad, it just wasn't as good as the Pentax in my scoring. So that is, again, smaller grip, not as comfortable to hold. The weight balance feels a little bit top, uh, sorry, side and back heavy, very different to hold and use. It doesn't feel as stable in one hand as the Pentax does. And the placement of some of the dials is okay, but not great. Changing the ISO is a little bit tricky. Uh, I mean, it's fine. It's just not as comfortable as a Pentax. And just some of the placement of buttons and things such as if you're using the grip, which is the configuration we're talking about in this video, you have to remove the grip to access the multi-exposure dial, which 
lot of people don't even use, so that might not matter to you. Overall though, I just did find that the ergonomics of the Pentax were a little bit more comfortable, it's a little bit lighter, and I gave the win to the Pentax with a 9 out of 10 and the Mamiya at 8 out of 10, so also not bad. The next thing I scored was noise, although this is not too important, most people won't really care too much about the noise the camera makes, but if you do shoot weddings like I do, or if noise is a factor, I thought I would include this even though it doesn't contribute to the final score much. The sound of the Pentax shutter is a little bit loud and crunchy, kind of sounds like a cough, it's a bit obnoxious at something like a wedding, so just to fire that so you can hear it. That's the sound of the Pentax and the Mamiya for comparison. I'll just take out the dark slide. It just sounds smoother and more electronic, more refined in comparison to the Pentax. Both of them sound a little bit different when there's film loaded, mind you, but this should give you an idea of the, the sound of the motors and the shutter in general. So the noise factor for the Pentax is quite loud, quite noisy. I gave it 6.5 out of 10. Mamiya got a 7 out of 10. Both of them are not silent cameras, but I thought I would just comment on that attribute. The next thing was the actual weight measurement. So both of these cameras with everything loaded on, so the in the case of the Mamiya, the grip is on the back. Uh, they both have a full set of batteries. The Mamiya came in at 1.69 kilos and the, the Pentax 1.64 kilos. So not a huge difference, but the Pentax is a little bit lighter. You can barely notice it, but it is lighter. So the Pentax, even though it takes a whole bunch of AA batteries, and this is a much lighter single battery, it was still lighter than the Mamiya. So the next thing in my score table was the speed of the camera. Now this isn't a huge deal, but again, if you are a wedding shooter, if you shoot portraits and you want that uh, shot to shot speed, there wasn't a huge difference, but in my experience, I felt like the Pentax was a little bit quicker. Again, they're both not gonna advance through film at m heaps of frames per second. And I'm sure if you're shooting medium format, you're probably not wanting to blast through film, but it just felt like the advance was quicker on the Pentax probably due to the fact that the advanced system is built into the camera, whereas with the Mamiya, it's a connection between the body and the back, and the motor runs on a cog that you can see when you remove the back, so it's a little bit slower. And uh, I gave the win to the Pentax in terms of speed, with uh, 9 out of 10 for what it is, and 8 out of 10 for the Mamiya. In terms of the light meter, this was the next thing I looked at. This one has an AE Prism Finder, as mentioned, I'm trying to set up an equivalent comparison here. So the AE Prism Finder on this Mamiya 645 has an average metering mode, a spot metering mode, and an auto, which chooses between average or spot, depending on what the camera and the computer thinks it should use. Uh, the average works well. I found that this particular meter was underexposing a little bit when comparing it to my handheld Sekonic meter and doing comparisons between the Pentax and even the Bronica and other cameras, but then that could just be down to this particular copy. So I'm going to ignore that and not let it contribute to the score. But the auto mode, I didn't think was too great. It's supposed to choose between spot and average based on what it thinks. And in testing, it didn't seem like you could rely on that because it might choose spot metering with a backlit scene and then end up overexposing too much. Or it could choose average when it should have chosen spot and having uh, resulted in underexposed shot. So compared to the Pentax, I just thought the metering modes on the Pentax were a little bit better and they consist of a spot metering mode, a center weighted average, and then this green smart matrix metering mode. I'm not sure what it's actually called technically, but just in testing, it seems to give a better exposure, including backlit scenes. It's supposed to be a mode that takes into account things like backlit and whole scene average, but still being center weighted, which for a smart metering mode, I think was more effective than the Mamiya's built-in meter. Another thing that played into the scoring for the meter was the actual meter readouts in the viewfinder. With the Mamiya, it has that uh, column of shutter speeds on the left, which are in red. They're not as easy to see. They're not as intuitive either because the Pentax has a traditional meter bar at the bottom that gives you an intuitive idea of how far off the suggested uh, exposure is from what you've chosen. You don't really see if you're a quarter stop off in the Mamiya view, uh, viewfinder. So due to that, I felt like the meter itself and the interface for it was more intuitive and effective in the Pentax, even ignoring the fact that this copy of the Mia seemed to underexpose a little bit. So I gave it a score of uh, 10 out of 10 for the Pentax. The metering in this is fantastic. All the different modes, it all works really well. You've got the screen there, the, the in viewfinder readout is great, uh, but the Mamiya still got eight out of 10 because it's not bad. The next thing I looked at was modularity. 
So this is probably going to be a clear winner that you can predict. The modularity win easily went to the Mamiya 645. You can remove the viewfinder, the grip. You can get different types of grips, including the manual crank. You can get a waist level finder. You can interchange the back mid roll. And there's obviously a whole bunch of different lenses you can get for it. So that offers a lot of advantages. You might, for example, want to put on a waist level viewfinder and combine that with a manual advanced crank, which would make the whole kit a lot lighter and more compatible with certain situations. The Pentax is not very modular. You can get some accessories for it. You can still get spare film inserts. You can't interchange the mid roll because they're just inserts, they're not backs. There's no dark slide system with the Pentax. You can get things like flashes and another great accessory that often seems to pop up when you look at these online is a little flip up viewfinder magnifier, which really helps with manual focusing if that's how you plan to use the camera. Mine actually came with one of those, but unfortunately I lost it some time ago. I lost half of it because I changed to this rubber eye cup and it was actually really handy to have as an option. But overall, I only scored the, the Pentax 4 out of 10 for modularity in comparison to the Mamiya because it's just an all-in-one camera. It's not a modular camera like the Mamiya. The next thing we looked at was lens options. We've kind of touched on that already. They both have a lot of lenses available I don't think either was drastically better than the other. Having looked up the line of lenses you can get for both of them, it seemed like there was a little bit more available for the Mamiya. But the Pentax has a great variety of lenses available too. Uh, you have more autofocus lenses, as mentioned, for the Pentax. This can be used as a completely automatic camera in program mode. You put it all in the green dots. You can put the aperture on these manual focus lenses into green for auto aperture too. And having autofocus would mean that you have a completely automatic camera. There are some autofocus lenses available for the Mamiya, but not as many uh, from what I could research. There are also other lenses available for these cameras, such as leaf shutter lenses, I think for the Mamiya at least, and maybe even things like tilt or shift lenses, maybe both. But because there's not a huge difference, there wasn't any difference in the score as far as I'm concerned here. They both have plenty of great lenses available. The next score I gave was for flash sync speed. Both of these are the same, 1 60th of a second, so nothing too great, but equal in that regard. So overall, looking at all those scores, the preliminary uh, average I gave based on all those scores of aspects I've talked about already was about the same, funny enough. So that's kind of showing you how democracy can fail sometimes. You've got equal scores at about 78% on the Pentax and 79% on the uh, Mamiya 645 based on how I weighted the scores. Now this didn't take into account price yet. So let's look at price and economy. The Mamiya 645 gives you 15 shots per roll. The Pentax gives you 16. This might matter to you. Film's getting expensive and it's worth noting that there is a difference there. Price of the actual camera. I did a research uh, based on the last eight to 10 sold cameras and some uh, freshly listed ones as well figured out an average price on the Pentax at the time of making this video, which is February, March, 2022, 1,360 Australian dollars for the Pentax, which is about 992 US dollars. In comparison, the Mamiya 645 was about 1,400 Australian dollars. So also about 1,020 US dollars, not a huge difference there. So you could almost say they're about the same price. Now this really surprised me because when I bought my Pentax 645N, this was back in 2016, and I paid about 550 Australian dollars shipped. So it was much less. It was almost a third of the price. The, and that's because the prices I just quoted you for the current listings doesn't even include shipping. I paid 550 shipped. So this camera has tripled in price, which really surprised me. And I was thinking that it would actually still be a little bit cheaper than the Mamiya, which it used to be when I bought mine, which would have given it the win in terms of overall score, including price and value. But because the price is the same, again, we're kind of at a stalemate and they're both scoring the same, taking price into account. So that means we have to look at other things, more subjective factors on the camera. But at least that breakdown illustrates that both of these cameras are great options. They're both about the same price. They both have a lot of great features but they're quite different in those regards that I've mentioned so far. So let's jump into that a little bit and talk more subjectively about what I think you should get and why, what the advantages are of each camera over the other, and what I would pick if I had the chance to start over again. So my opinion with everything I've gone over so far is that if you think you want the interchangeable backs 
and the modular system, easily just go with the Mamiya 645. Whether it's this version or the Pro TL, you can't go wrong because this offers you the ability to change to a different viewfinder, to change the grip to a manual grip or a different type of grip with different batteries, a lot of different options, and to change backs mid-roll. If that doesn't matter to you, uh, you know, it's not going to be any extra advantage. So if you want the more modular system, the Mamiya offers that. It's also a little bit more refined and advanced. It has the mirror lockup feature. It just looks a little bit more slick. Arguably, you could say it looks better. But then again, it's not as ergonomic to me. So I think if you want that more refined option with the modularity and versatility, go with the Mamiya 645 if it suits you because the price is about the same. However, if you want something that's a little bit more simple, functional in terms of its ease of use with all those autofocus options, the layout of the controls, the ergonomics are a little bit more comfortable and you don't really need interchangeable backs, maybe go with the Pentax because it could be more reliable in the long run. There's less parts that are removable. So maybe there's less to go wrong, including that issue I mentioned earlier, things such as that could pop up. It's also good that AA batteries are quite accessible and that there's plenty of good autofocus lenses for this camera if you want something really easy to use and you just don't think you're going to change anything about the camera. So if you want simple, functional, effective, and perhaps even more reliable, go with the Pentax. So that's the next uh, part of this video. Which one would I choose if I had the opportunity to start again? I would still go with the Pentax. I just preferred how it felt to use. I found it more comfortable, better ergonomics in terms of the dials, the button layouts, all that sort of stuff. And the viewfinder readout was a lot more comfortable and intuitive for me to use. So in terms of actually using the camera side by side, I preferred those features. I also liked that the stock lens is 75 mil over 80. I know it's a minor thing, but that's what it was. I preferred that focal length a little bit more. And I also preferred that this lens focuses closer. It also feels a lot smoother in terms of the manual focus compared to the Mamiya 645. Again, not that that was bad. I also do like that it has that side tripod socket and a standard cable release as opposed to the Mamiya, which requires a little electronic connection for its cable release. So it's not as universal in that sense. What would suit you really depends on how you would use the camera. So I hope all that made sense. But now maybe let's look at the wild card of the video, which I mentioned earlier, the Bronica ETRS. So the Bronica ETRS is uh, Sarah's camera. It's also a 645 camera, and it's also kitted out to look pretty similar to these two with the grip and the prism finder. And it is also a metered prism. So you have that functionality almost the same as the two have compared so far. However, it's not electronic. This is mechanical. It's manual advance when you have the grip on. Uh, but let's quickly go through and see how this compared to the other two in terms of those scores I mentioned. Uh, in terms of viewfinder, the overall score was 8 out of 10 for the Bronica. Great viewfinder, also has focusing aids, and it's brighter by a tiny margin than even the Mamiya, not as bright as the Pentax. Ergonomics got 7 out of 10. Handle feels really comfortable compared to either of these, but it is also very side and back heavy when holding it, and it is overall heavier than either of the other two cameras. Noise factor, again, doesn't contribute as much, but it's not as noisy as the other two, being uh, mechanical. Sounds nicer, kind of like a mini Hasselblad sound. The weight of the camera was 1.96 kilos, so it's considerably heavier than the other two. Speed, I didn't really judge that because it's manual advance, but technically it could be just as fast if you are good at manual advance with the grip. Uh, the meter is really nice. It, it doesn't have the advanced modes of something like the Pentax, but it works quite well and it's accurate. Modularity is excellent, just as good as the Mamiya 645, meaning you can uh, change backs mid-roll. You can have different backs, 120, 220, 35mm panoramic backs, which is also available on the Mamiya 645 as far as I've heard. You can get different prisms and uh, you can change from this right-hand grip to a regular crank and make it small and uh, versatile with something like a waist-level finder. So that scored really well on modularity. Lens options were also really good on the Bronica. There's plenty of excellent lenses available for this camera system, and they are leaf shutter lenses, which comes into account with the next category, which was flash sync. This can sync at up to 1 500th of a second, which is a great advantage if you're planning on using a lot of flash in various environments. So that is another advantage for the Bronica there. The next um, thing was the overall score based on what we've talked about so far. So this is already winning a little bit at 85%, but then we look at the economy and price. Film economy is 15 shots per roll. So not as good as Pentax, same as the Mamiya, 
price of the camera during the time of making this video average came to about 920 Australian dollars, which is much cheaper than either of these two cameras. So overall, the score, including price, came to 90% on the Bronica ETRS, whereas the other two cameras scored closer to about 75 to 80%. So if you don't really need an electronic camera and the auto advance that that offers, I think the Bronica ETRS makes an excellent option. So even though you might be in the market to compare these two, it's worth asking yourself, is the popularity of these worthy of their current price? I think it is if you're going to use it, if you're going to take advantage of the electronic features and the interchangeable backs and modularity of the Mamiya, for example. Uh, but you can get a lot of that with something like the Bronica, which is a lot cheaper. You can even get an entire kit with multiple lenses for a similar price to one of these. So I thought I would include that because it is a camera that I've used before. I have access to it, but again, I know it's not a fair comparison because if I'm going to compare mechanical cameras, this would be better compared to something like the older Mamiya 645 and perhaps other cameras. But I thought I'd mention it in case you were curious because I think it's a really great underrated camera that hasn't hit that hype point in terms of having extreme price hikes, as I mentioned with the Pentax. So that's mainly what I wanted to go over with the comparison of the Pentax 645N and the Mamiya. I hope this all made sense and, and shed a little bit of light on the situation for you if you're in the market for a 645 camera. All right, so I'd just like to say thanks again to Reshoot Australia for letting me borrow this Mamiya 645. It was a pleasure to use and definitely check them out if you're interested in film cameras based here in Melbourne. They buy and sell. And as mentioned, I did have that little bit of an issue with the Prism Finder, but that isn't a reflection because this was a camera that wasn't ready to go on the sales floor yet. The people at Reshoot set this up for me with the grip, which wasn't yet tested. So I was effectively testing it for them. And if you do buy a camera from them, they also offer a three month warranty anyway. So there's peace of mind there, nothing to worry about. So yeah, thanks again for letting me borrow the camera. I'll be giving this back to them soon, but it was a pleasure to use. And if you're interested in any of the photos that I took on it, I uh, did take some at the wedding, but also shot a roll recreationally, which looked great. There wasn't anything to complain about with the lenses. I was able to also borrow the 55 mil lens, which I took a few environmental portraits on that you should be seeing now. And the performance of the lens was overall great. It wasn't too different to the um, lenses I'm used to on the Pentax. The lenses are equally pretty good. I couldn't notice any one being much sharper than the other. So this comparison hopefully should serve as a good way for you to aid your research and figure out which one would suit you better. So thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video in regards to either of these two cameras. Drop them in the comments. I'll see if I can answer those questions and let me know what you think. Do you own either of these two cameras? Did you choose one of these particular cameras over the other for any particular reason? Let us know why. It'd be interesting for other people to know. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.